Holy moly, another day, another flip, and another group of people lying to you. Let's get started with the lie, then let's talk about this potential Fed flip. It's actually kind of shocking. Okay, we're going to respect your time and keep this short here. First things first, there's a, this, this very, very common trend that I'm seeing on Twitter. And what people are doing is they're saying, hey, look, UPS workers just got this massive pay raise. And even the workers over at American Airlines just got this massive massive pay raise. Look at this poster. They say American airline pilots approve record contract with higher pay. Every one of these is extremely visible. They get into the public eye for a reason. Others want the same. Hello wage price spiral. In other words, here's yet another person to sell you fear, doom and gloom that the wage price spiral is coming. Now I'm gonna be transparent here, and you know this because all my videos are still public, my history is clear. In January of 22, I said the biggest risk we have is a wage price spiral. It never happened. We were over that within the first few months because we realized the wage price spiral wasn't happening then. And it certainly is not happening now. But understand how they're lying to you here. And after I tell you how they're lying to you here, you need to see what Nick T just said about, oh man, a potential flippy floppy de doodly. Are you ready for this? So understand this. The article says, if you just read the first line, pilots approved a new contract that, provide, that would provide a 46% cumulative pay raise. Okay, if you stop there, well then you post crap like this on Twitter. But it actually says it's over a four year term. But not only is it over a four year term, but the last pay raise pilot Scott was in 2019. And if you now calculate the CAGR, which I did, you're gonna see what you're looking at. First of all, I replied to this and said, what are you smoking their last, in their last pay raise? was the last pay raise was in 2019, right? They, they're finally catching up. They deserve a pay raise. Somebody else then replies and says 46% though, to which I reply and go, it's been four years since 19. 46% over four more years, that's eight years. Now what you have to compound 4.68% growth over eight years. And that's what you're gonna notice Oh, that's how you get to the 46%. So in other words, the compounded annual growth rate of wages here over the last eight years was just 4.68%. That's not a big deal. That's not a wage price spiral. It really does not matter. The Fed's average industry goal is that wages go up 3%. And guess what? This is aerospace. You're telling me in aerospace, with the massive pilot shortages we've been having and the massive amount of travel and entertainment spend, 4.68% is your definition of a wage price spiral. It's a complete loony bin argument, whatever. I just wanna show you how people are lying because it's this kind of stuff that is not based in reality and it's pathetic. Next, Nick T just mentioned something that could indicate a Fed flip-flop. Actually, he mentioned a couple things, uh, which is actually kind of interesting because the first thing that he mentioned uh, relates to what we were talking about just now with the wage price spiral. So let's put that nail in the coffin, then talk about the Fed flip. Uh, Nick T here says, data from Gusto, a payroll and benefits software company serving more than 300,000 small and medium businesses, shows that pay rates for new hires are 5% lower than they were for new recruits the same time last year. Now this is actually not a surprise because course members and I have been analyzing this in our course member live streams when we notice that, take a look at some of the stuff you're hearing. Here's a zip recruiter earnings transcript. Imagine actually reading the earnings calls to understand what's actually happening in the world. But listen to the, some, some of the things you got here. Employers continue to respond to the enduring macro uncertainty with caution. The number of job openings and employers' willingness to pay for those jobs has been declining significantly from the peaks of 2021 and 22. This trend is consistent amongst both small, medium businesses and enterprise larger clients alike and across multiple different industries. As a result, we're lowering our guidance for earnings. Okay, so in other words, and, and by the way, that's just ZipRecruiter. 
There were three companies we analyzed in that course member live stream, all of them payroll service providers. And guess what? Every single one of them said the same thing. Payroll expectations are going down. Job placements are plummeting. Hiring is slowing. We now think the BLS is going to revise how many jobs were hired over the last six months down by 500,000. Now we'll still average 300,000 job gains per month if you even believe the after revised figure. It's clear the labor market is slowing, but for people to be arguing that the labor market is going into a wage price spiral, you're absolutely in the loony bin. Now, another thing that I think is incredible is this is the first time I have seen this potential hint from the Fed and it's absolutely mind blowing. So when I came up with the Nike swoosh recovery, Initially, I said, and I, I've, I've said it actually every day, I'm like, I don't know, man, I, I, I think it's going to be a volatile Nike swoosh. And people are like, I don't know, Kevin, it ain't volatile, it's just going straight up, a hell. <laughs> like, just wait, <laughs> like, it's, it's going to have a correction. And when we just had a little correction, right, you know, it's green again, it's recovering, we're happy again, okay, whatever, great. The volatile Nike swoosh. Why did I create that thesis? I created it because of something known as opportunistic disinflation and fate. Those are big words, but it's basically a way of saying that after Paul Volcker, we had Alan Greenspan, and the Fed basically took 20 years to get inflation to 2%. In other words, there was no rush. And my belief was that because the Fed wants inflation to average 2%, and that there really won't be a rush to get inflation down as long as expectations are stable or falling, which they are, then you could take your time getting back to trend, as long as it's not excessive. And that's exactly what they did in the 80s. Now that was my thesis for the Nike swoosh because it would take people time to realize the Fed is willing to have an average of 2% and they don't have to be at 2% tomorrow. I thought people would slowly roll over and think, okay, all right, I guess I'll get back in the market. And that's what I thought would contribute to the Nike swoosh albeit volatile, because I didn't think the data would just be glorious, although inflation data has kind of already been glorious. Anyway, listen to who just mentioned this. Last year, Jackson Hole was about lessons from Volcker, but for the second part of the Fed's inflation fight, some former Fed officials say Alan Greenspan might offer the template. This is from Nick T. I'm like giddy today because I'm like, oh my God, this is literally what created the foundation of the uh, uh, the, the volatile Nike swoosh recovery. And I know some people are like, man, that guy gets excited by Fed talk. I do. <laughs> okay, so uh, now listen to this. You ready for this? Uh, we'll open up some more replies here from Nick T. Okay, key to the debate. At what point could the Fed take a more patient or opportunistic approach to the last mile of the inflation fight? Quote, they've got to get core inflation below 3% before you really start feeling good about this. Now that's interesting because they're just now potentially opening up the door to well, if core inflation is, say, 2.9%, maybe we can start calling uh, the days of opportunistic disinflation back. This is amazing. This right here, listen to his definition, was a strategy of aggressively resisting incipient increases in inflation once, once it reached a moderate but above target level but not tightening further. It's basically a way of saying we waited, okay? That's, that's it. So, and then the upshot is if the economy doesn't fall out of, uh, out of, you know, if the bottom doesn't fall out of the economy and core settles, then we could actually allow it to just run between 2.8 to 3.2, call in the average flexible average inflation targeting and not cause as much joblessness. This is absolutely incredible. So here is a video on A, how people are lying to you. This kind of garbage I see every day. I'm tired of it, I'm gonna start calling it out more. Garbage, lies, bad. Second thing, great news on the Fed. Subscribe for more. I will keep you updated on every fart.